My name is Marty Case. I'm the author of The Relentless Business of Treaties, How Indigenous Land Became U.S. Property. This video is an introduction to part two and part three of the book. Uh, the titles are Traders and Men of Industry. In part one, uh, the book outlines how land speculation was the most immediate motivation for U.S. expansion across the continent. The second part talks about how trade, specifically the fur trade, was the mechanism by which the U.S. expanded uh, because it was intricately involved in engineering land session treaties. From the very earliest days of the U.S., the trade policy of the country was to run indigenous people into debt because, as Jefferson said, we notice that when the best get debts that are too uh, large to carry, they're more apt to lop off those debts with the cession of lands. Traders were in a prime position to help engineer land sessions because through their commercial activities, they built often a lot of trust between the U.S. and indigenous nations. And usually they use that as a personal power base. They would bring their contacts with indigenous nations to the U.S., for instance, to get trading licenses and monopolies on trade. They were so important to this land session process that fur traders were present at three-fourths of nearly 400 treaties between the U.S. and all indigenous nations. There was a process by which trade was used to engineer a land session treaty. First, generate debt among indigenous people. Second, when the debt became too burdensome and the uh, game had uh, disappeared, traders would call in the debt so that indigenous nations had no recourse but to cede their territory. Then the payments from the government to indigenous nations would go to the traders to pay off their debts. What was left would be used by indigenous people to buy the goods from the traders that they had formerly traded furs for. Then the uh, fur trade companies would have virtually all the cash in a territory, so they were able to buy the land that had been ceded. And then they could diversify into transportation, uh, banking, and land speculation. So the fur trade uh, supported land speculation. It also was a part of turning the natural world into uh, commodities. In this case, it was animals. Part three of the book talks about extraction and the role it played in turning the natural world into commodities in the U.S. property system. Extraction of timber and minerals became the third way to make enormous fortunes from U.S. Indian relations, uh, joining land speculation and the fur trade. And extraction uh, developed its own mechanism for uh, forcing indigenous land sessions. First, miners like Henry Dodge would uh, squat or invade indigenous land that was rich in minerals. This would create conflict and they would call in the U.S. military for their protection. Then the military presence would help uh, engineer a land session treaty. Consequently, uh, the fur trade and extraction turned land, animals, mineral, and timber uh, into commodities. And because the extractors and the traders or at the treaties, that transformation in how people relate to the natural world was immediate. 